Hey, what's up guys, JB here. So this is part two of my Final Fantasy VI collaboration series. And today we're gonna to be focusing on Terra Branford. And Terra is actually the very first character that you get introduced to in Final Fantasy VI. She has a mysterious past that you can't remember that you learn about over the course of the game. Now, as I said last time, if you haven't ever played Final Fantasy VI, I highly recommend that you do so. Now, Terra is coming into War of the Visions as a 90 cost fire unit, and sadly, she's not gonna be free. So let's dive in and see what she does and see if she's worth our hard-earned Vizior. And as always, let's start with her TMR. And this one has a very unique effect on it that increases the rate that your team fills the evocation gauge. Now, we've seen this sort of ability before within the Scholar class, but never before on a TMR. Additionally, it does increase your own AP by a flat 20 on top of that, and it has two casts. So I really like this TMR, especially for high-end PvE content such as guild raids or Trials of Reckoning boss runs. We're getting that summon peril out early can make a huge difference in your overall damage output. I think there are definite PvP use cases as well where you could build a strategy around being able to get out that field effect in peril early and really amp up the damage that your team can do. But even with that increased evocation gain in shorter PvP battles, I'm not sure there would be a huge tangible benefit there. Now moving into the general stat pool for Terra, and, and this is probably the tankiest mage that we've seen to date, and honestly scrap the mage part because she's just a bruiser among bruisers really. 4500 HP is top end bruiser class, you know, higher than Noctis, higher than the upcoming Astoria. It actually has her on par with Dwayne wane in terms of raw HP, which is absolutely crazy. She also has the raw mitigation to back that up too. She has four base defense and 12 spirit. She has positive resistances to all damage types other than strike, including 10% to slash, missile, and magic. Now again, these are the three most prevalent damage types that we see in PvP, so amazing place to start for Terra. She has useful ailment resist here as well, with both confuse and disable at a 50% rate. On the more negative side here though, her dex is very low, and her luck isn't great either. This is going to put her in a rough spot of the accuracy index. So hitting evade units outside of the guaranteed hit that she has in her skills will be very, very challenging. Her agility at just 60 is also very much a concern. This is definitely lower end in terms of modern damage dealers. I'm not as concerned about it here though, because Terra does have access to an agility passive, which I think in most cases she will be setting. One other drawback for her is she's also gonna be starting the battle with only 50% AP. So for things like Guild War, her AP could be in a rough spot for second strikes. So having an acquired AP up VC in the party will definitely help her out a bit and help her mitigate that. My last note here is more of a nitpick in that it's based around her base magic total. It's definitely not bad by any means, but the total that you see here is inflated by a 25% increase she's getting from both her board and mastery. So this is definitely a stat that you'll want to build up a bit through vision cards to make sure that her damage is on point. Okay, so let's talk about build paths for Terra. And the first one here would be a bruiser build. And, and for this, you would use some combination of these three passives. She has passives for both increased spirit and increased defense. She also has another one here, which gives her magic up and 12% magic resistance. If you opted for those defense and spirit passives, it would have her sitting at a pretty chonky 16 defense and 24 spirit before we even get to gearing. Oh, by the way, you also get 24% HP there as well. So there's no shortage of ways to sort of enhance her base bruising capability here, which is very, very nice. All right, the next build here would be a damage build. And here you'd use her magic up passive as well as her spirit penetration passive. And I think for general usage, this is probably what you'll be taking in many, many scenarios. Okay, so the last build I want to highlight here would be more of what I'd call a summer her build and this is because she has a unique passive which increases the rate that she gains evocation gauge sort of boosting up the amount that she contributes to that gauge for each of her attacks maybe more of like a niche build but something that's you know very interesting i think for counters, she has Absorb AP, which is a counter that we also saw on the recently released Golbez. I think this is kind of an underrated counter. First off, it has an above average chance of going off at 30% base. And this is a skill I did quite a bit of testing on for Golbez when he came out. And I found that in scenarios where you have a 25 killer effect in play, like from something like Bahamut, when this skill triggers, it actually absorbs in the neighborhood of 90 AP from the unit. If you also have elemental advantage on top of that, you can see AP in the neighborhood of 1 100 when the skill goes off. So this is a hugely powerful AP steal that can absolutely cripple an enemy if it goes off. It also helps Terra quite a bit if this goes off because of her 50% starting AP. She's able to get 90 or 100 AP when this goes off. That's going to essentially nullify any weakness that we talked about there. So 
I like this skill quite a bit. She does also have access to Paladin's Guard, which may be another consideration. Maybe for something like Class Match, where you're expecting maybe a lot of physical missile damage coming your way as you need to sort of siege in on those ranged units. So definitely a, another nice option to have. All right, so let's dive into Terra's unique job next, and let's start with her buffing capabilities. And her first buff here is actually pretty crazy. It's, it's definitely one of the better buffs that I've seen in the game. First off, it buffs the party for an incredible 40 slash attack, while also buffing herself for 40% magic and 40% magic res penetration. Now, Fire has no shortage of slash users who could definitely benefit from that huge 40 slash mod. This also gives her nice relevance in mixed parties as well. The self buffs that she gets on top of this are really nice. You know, she has a mix of both slashing and magic attack abilities in her kit. Now, her second buff here, as I understand it from Wotov Calc, is that this is a flat 25% increase to the summon gauge. So this seems to have more relevance maybe in PvE where you're really trying to get out that summon in peril quick in the battle. But as we talked about earlier, you know, this could be a PvP tactic as well. You know, the summon effects are very powerful and they're all guaranteed hit abilities. So definitely a nice utility option for her to have in her bag. So the last buff in her main kit is a 50% physical barrier that lasts for three hits. So this is essentially a saintly wall clone. And I think this definitely cements her as a top tier physical bruiser, you know, especially when we're considering physical damage. For Terra's attack skills, the first one here is kind of a Faraga blade clone. Now this one is a range 3 large damage 200% mod that hits in a line AoE. This one would also be a 225 mod against any ice units with that included killer effect that it brings. It also packs a 25% chance to disable the targets. And Terra is definitely a unit that you'll be running at 97 faith, so we'll definitely have a decent chance of landing that assuming the target doesn't have any innate resistance. Our next attack here is her Meltdown ability, and this one really is her marquee skill. It's a range 3 instant cast with a cross AoE bringing it up to a total of 4 range. It also has that large 200% modifier. And as we saw in the live stream, this did get a global buff, bringing it up to six total uses compared to three that it has on the JP side. And this is a pretty nice quality of life for PvP, in that you don't really need to worry about her running out of uses on this skill for multi-round PvP, or if you're up against evade units that have death avoidance mechanics like reflex or re-raise or immortal spirit. The skill itself is also a guaranteed hit. This is huge for Terra. You know, as we saw in the stats overview, her accuracy is definitely a big pain point for her. Now, after the attack lands, it does increase her magic attack by 25 as well. So this buff is definitely going to be very helpful to ramp up her damage for any follow-up hits that are happening in the mid-fight. Now, two other skills to highlight here are from her main job sub, and I think this might be something you might consider maybe for live PvP or maybe for brutal PvE events. The first one here being more of a utility spell in that it brings immunity to several different status effects, including some important ones like Disable, Confuse, and Charm. The second skill she gets is essentially a Faraga skill, which gets her some additional range at, at up to 5 range. Now last one here is her Limit Break, and this one is a Magical Slash attack. It has range 4 with a cross AoE, so bringing it up to that 5 total range. And this gets her an additional 40 spirit penetration before the damage lands. So definitely a good one for busting through tankier targets, you know, if she needs it. So let's look at Terra's two sub jobs, and she gets both Blade Soul and Paladin. So just like Ibarra in that regard. Now Blade Soul is going to enhance that magical slashing side of her kit, and this one definitely rounds out her damaging capabilities a little bit more, I would say. It gives her access to Slate Wiper, which is an AoE dispel, and it also gives her Bamboo Splitter, which can be a good way of setting up double turn opportunities by boosting your CT. The main problem with these abilities is that they require you to crit for the additional effect. Now Terra does actually have a pretty nice base crit at 24%, but I'd say you would definitely need to build upon that value a bit with gearing and espers in order to make these reliable, which may not be ideal. Now Paladin, on the other hand, is the clear choice from a survivability perspective. It really enhances and goes nicely with the bruising capability that's afforded from her base stats. And you can see here she has Sentinel, but crucially she does get Immortal Spirit as well. And I think Paladin is really going to be the choice in most scenarios purely because of this skill. For most units, it's already going to take several hits to take Terra down. So having that death defying mechanic there on top of it to potentially take yet another hit is extremely powerful. And I like this one quite a bit. 
So here's a mono fire build idea. And we have the two classic 100 fire cost units here alongside Terra. I do like the synergy of the vision cards that you can have between Terra and Glaciella. I do think though that King Mont and Terra also have pretty nice synergy as well. You know, Terra provides that 40 slash attack up buff that Mont would really like. And Mont has his 38% slash resist down attack that could really amp up Terra's magical slash attacks and, and take them to a new level. I do like the King Mont vision card as a secondary VC here for that added HP to the party. That's one of the least diminished party effects when it comes to equipping as a sub VC. However, there are definitely other options that you could consider there for secondary VCs. Maybe something like the Brachiosaur for its agility and single target resist. It would be nice for more of a, a bruising party like we have here. Overall though, fire is pretty lacking when it comes to vision card selection. So you may need to look at solid rainbow VCs to fill in the gaps here. In this case, I went with the Typhon VC for the combination of magic attack and accuracy. And I also went with the Black Rose card for the agility up to the party. I definitely view this team as excelling more on a smaller close quarters map. If it was a longer map, you might consider a unit like like Setia instead of Glaciella. That fire imperil that Setia brings from a distance on top of the slash imperil that Mont brings could be a really devastating combination when Terra follows up with a slash attack. Last thing I want to look at here is the stats that I was able to put together in this build in the JP Builder. Now keep in mind, this is with a fully kitted Trust Stone TMR and the secondary VCs. But even so, these numbers are just outrageous. You know, she's going to be a tanky beast and I'm absolutely here for it. I mean, 11,000 HP, almost 1,500 magic still. And she has that 36 defense and 46 spirit on top of it. So very, very tanky unit. All right, so here in meta considerations, uh, and I think these are going to be some of the tougher matchups uh, for Terra going into the future. And to be fair, at least in terms of wind and light, you know, those matchups are tough for almost any element right now. Will Terra be able to do pretty nice damage to these more physical based tanks? You know, absolutely. You know, she'll be able to tear up Engelbert in particular. And I think if you're able to catch multiple units with her Meltdown ability, Fire will definitely be in a competitive spot. The main drawback I see though is that King Mont is definitely just going to go down faster than, than any of these tanks. The other thing to watch out for would be more the merrier with that high chance to silence that she brings. Something that would definitely shut down Terra completely. If we're talking manual PvP though, tanks aren't really something that's often used. And I think Terra will be very, very good in that mode, especially on maps where healing is allowed, where you could maybe back her up with a unit like Minwoo for some healing and quickening. I think that combination would be a great way to sort of overcome some of the drawbacks for Terra, which are her lack of mobility and range. Okay, so now for future considerations. And we did just get a magical fire base card with the Bringers of Shadow card that returned this past week. In my mind, this card has a couple of uses. One would be if you have like a single magic or support user in the party and you had them paired with a couple of physical attackers. Or you could use it if you potentially wanted to build up and bulk up against the pierce damage type. I think this could also be a solid subvision card in a mixed damage party. But otherwise, I don't think this is a super compelling VC, you know, other than the fact that fire just doesn't really have a lot of other vision card options at the moment. Okay, next one here is Terra's vision card, Omen, which is going to be released alongside her. A very nice vision card with that magic man eater. You, know, you can imagine pairing her with units like Regalia Glassy or Rain, or maybe even Ishtola or Mish in cost-restricted parties. I do love the secondary effects on this card as well. It has that 8 spirit and 20 missile res for the party, so it could be really nice going up against Jaden, for example. Now the other vision card I have here is the elusive Crystal Chronicles vision card. And unfortunately, Global only ever had one chance to get this vision card and it was quite a while ago. And it just seems that Gumi is never gonna release it again at this point. You know, JP got another crack at this one, I think at their one and a half year anniversary, right around Jaden's release. I really wish we did get it because this is a great VC for a magic base unit to wear, but also would benefit mixed damage type parties in the fire element with that 35 fire attack that it brings. So Gumi, if you're listening, you know, please reissue this card. I think a lot of people would consider pulling for it. All right, so another future consideration here is a unit that I actually did a preview on a few weeks ago, and that's Sweetheart Ildira here. So if you want to know more about what she does, you know, definitely check the link. Uh, I'll put it above. She's going to be a very nice unit for the fire element, a good addition to that cast. She has a really, really nice limit break that she brings. It maybe could be the first sprinkle of the buildup of the fire element that they may be moving into in the future. You know, we'll have to see what happens there. 
I think at least in the short term, you know, Fire is in a little bit of a tough position. Within the same collaboration, Celis is coming, who is a top tier water tank, who's particularly adept at nullifying magical based damage. Very soon, we're also going to be getting this guy, Astoria, who is the water warrior of the crystal. And he's actually water's first 100 cost unit, a hugely powerful unit, and is going to spell trouble for Terra and the fire element in general. Something that could, of course, upend some of this speculation just a little bit will be the upcoming March Global Festival unit. Will it be fire? Will it be ice? Will it be water? At this point, the anticipation is absolutely killing me, but I'm sure big meta ripples are sure to follow whatever it ends up being. So that's Terra, and she's a fantastic addition to the fire element, with damage mitigation and hit points never before seen on a mage unit of any kind. On top of the tankiness, she also has access to Immortal Spirit, making her that much harder to deal with. Her party buff of 40 slash attack offers great synergy with Fire's existing casts and gives her opportunities to slot into rainbow parties as well. The Esper mechanics that she brings offer a nice way to harness the power of the various summons in the game, which are often an afterthought in many modes due to the time that it takes to charge up their attacks. Those Espers can be particularly powerful, especially in high-end PvE modes like Guild Raids or Trials of Reckoning bosses. As we talked about, I do consider Terra a very strong unit from manual play as well. Her high bulk against nearly all damage types, her access to 100% hit are definitely going to serve her well in that environment. And it remains to be seen how much a tank unit like Celis is going to appear in that mode. You know, tank units, especially ones without a guaranteed hit or game-changing status effects, are seldom played in, in the manual scene. On the other hand, you know, this is a unit who is absolutely going to suffer in the short term, you know, with strong water units incoming very shortly, and with fire not fully fleshed out as an element when it comes to vision cards and magical espers. Within our four month preview into the JP future, they've received just one new fire unit that we talked about in Sweetheart Ildira. Terra also has that low accuracy and low agility that we mentioned earlier on. So many of those things I'm sure will be built on and improved over time. And as they are, I do believe Terra is only going to get better. The question is, how long are we actually going to have to wait for that to happen? And can you afford to wait? So that's Terra, and part two of this series is coming to a close. As for my plans, I'm absolutely going to be pulling for this unit. I'm just praying that I don't have to spend 42k to do it. But what about you guys out there? Are you planning on pulling for Terra? Or are you waiting for Celis and Astoria? Definitely let me know in the comments down below. Also, how have you been liking the intros and music that I've been including in this series? Definitely let me know about that in the comments as well. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, help us grow and be notified of my future videos. And that's really all I have to say for today. So as always, stay safe out there, and I'll see you guys in the next one.